Okay, today we're going to paint this barn over here. I'm right alongside a road. There's my setup. Let's even zoom out. There's my car. So I'm hoping everything goes well. Everybody stays um, on the road, doesn't hit me. But anyway, uh, let's get started and see how this works out. Okay, so just getting started here. Just doing a simple block in of this barn. It's pretty windy out here today. Wind is always a bit of a challenge for plein air painting, especially when you're along a uh, right alongside a somewhat busy road here. It's not too busy, but there is some consistent traffic coming along here. And I'm just using some transparent red oxide for this block in, thinned with some mineral spirits. Now my horizon line is right about here. I'm standing uphill a little bit from this barn. There are some trees here. They actually come up higher, but I'm gonna cut them off a little bit just to make the composition a little more interesting. And back in here is this beautiful evergreen. So now that I have things fairly well established, first thing I'm gonna do is I always, almost always do is identify my darkest dark. And when I look at this, it's kind of a toss up between the evergreen tree over here and this part right here. But either way, they're not, um, they're not totally dark. By the way, really quick, uh, my colors, titanium white, cadmium lemon, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, viridian, and chromium green oxide. And I'm not using any medium at this point. I rarely ever use any kind of medium when I'm planar painting. This is all just thin with mineral spirits. Oops, I got a little red in there by accident. I'm trying a new camera I got today. I was using, for my videos, a Canon 7D old camera. Got it over 10 years ago. But it kept um, wanting to overheat as 
as the weather was getting warmer. And then it would even want to shut down so it wouldn't overheat, which is a good thing, but it's not good when you're trying to get a planner painting done and you have very limited time. So I'm trying now a different camera, a mirrorless, that they claim doesn't overheat nearly as easily. So I'm hoping they're correct. Okay, now the lightest um, thing in my subject is going to be the sky. I'm going to save that for last. I think I'm going to, going to go next for, uh, I should probably do the underside of the barn here. Don't know if that's called the underside, but this part right here. And I'm almost seeing a little bit of green in there, which makes sense because the grass is starting to really green up. We're in kind of mid-late April when I'm recording this, and when that grass gets green in these shadow areas, it can really pick up a lot of ambient light in there. This barn is mostly in shadow. So it could end up being a somewhat dark painting. By the way, if you're new to the channel or you haven't done so, if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. It really helps me to keep making these videos. It's quite a bit of work that actually goes into this. I'm a solo, I'm a one man show here. It's a lot of equipment to drag out and invest in. And so your subscription gives me some encouragement to keep going and keep putting the work into it. Also, if you could hit the like button, that'd be great. Keeps the uh, algorithms happy. Us human lives have all become about making computer algorithms happy. Thanks to big tech. So if you could hit the like button, that'd be awesome. And feel free to comment below if you want. If you have questions, I will try to answer them as soon as I can. Now my horizon line is up here so this part of the barn should angle up slightly toward the horizon line. So I want to make sure I get that in there it's going to be important. It's very subtle but it is there. Now, this red that I have down, this is just an approximate color. I shouldn't fuss with it too much here until I get everything else blocked in because it's going to be hard to gauge the value of that, or the color temperature and the value of that red until I get everything else going here.
And if you watch my other videos before, you've heard me say this. I say it to my students in my online workshops. Uh, paint what's obvious first before you try to paint what's ambiguous. And then getting the obvious in will help you determine the ambiguous. And it works pretty well if you just put in, you know, a lot of approximates and then start to go from there. The main thing is make sure your values are correct. The lightness and darkness of the color, that's really more important than anything. You get the values in and an approximate color, then you're usually, you got a firm foundation on which to build off of. Now, uh, this thing has a tin roof. I've never liked those too much, but that's what's there. I could try to make up some other color to put there, but I'm not going to. Just because I'm going to need that to help me gauge the color temperatures and that of everything else going on. Usually if I'm going to change stuff, I'll save that for the studio. I mean, I'll, I will make some changes when I'm planner painting in person, if, if it's easy for me to do, if I'm familiar with how to do it. But if I'm not sure, then I just leave it. This is just sketching, so I'm not out to win any awards with this right now. background woods there's a lot of stuff going on I'm squinting at it right now just because I want an approximate color and value and the important thing with what I'm putting in here is, is the color and value relationship between this and this accurate? You know, does this look like it's closer than that? That's really all I'm after here, at this stage anyway. Looks like we might have some company. Somebody pulling out from the neighbor's house. Hello. Nope, just doing a painting.
Yep. You need What's that? You need you know, yeah, that might be a good idea. Yeah, it's kind of right over the little slope there. Thank you. So they were definitely a little uh, suspicious of me. Lady asked if I had permission to paint the farmhouse, but I'm not on their property at all. I'm standing on kind of an abandoned field. Usually when you're out here doing this, the reaction is a little more positive, but back to their house so they got in their vehicle and drove up. I told them they're going to be on YouTube. Maybe they would have. <laughs> Wonder what they would have thought of that. Now there are some clouds back here, but I'm probably not going to put those in because there's not much sky here. I only have so much time. And now that I'm being watched very carefully, I believe, I feel even a little more pressure to uh, to hurry up and finish this up. I never blame people for being suspicious when they first pull up, but most people when they pull up and they find out you're painting are really cool about it. They were not. So. Of course, the one guy did say put my flashers on. It's not a bad idea, however, people are going to see the roof of my car long before they see my flashers, the angle my car is sitting, so now I'm not going to worry about the flashers. Sounds like they're getting a lawnmower out now. See that? Mow their grass and keep an eye on me that way. Okay, so with pretty much everything blocked in, I still have to do the grass down here, but it's given me a lot better idea of the uh, value and temperature of the roof of this barn.
Yep, they're out mowing the lawn. Okay, let's clean off my pallet a little bit. Probably going to do some more painting later today. I spilled my mineral spirits when I was setting up. The wind knocked my little mineral spirits can right off the hook. So I'm going to stop at the hardware store and get some more, I think. <clears throat> All right, so let's get in that green. That's a pretty intense green. I don't know if I want it to be that intense in my painting. Um, green is very tricky for artists. And... Yeah, I'm not exempt from that. A lot of times where artists mess up with green is that they don't put enough red in it. Now th this is spring and spring greens are always a bit more intense than uh, summer greens. I should say a bit more yellow is really the proper term. Getting close with the lawnmower. Okay, so right now I have everything pretty well blocked in. Most of the white's covered. This is a good time to really analyze your subject and the, um, and the painting and see how close you are. And I don't have the details in yet, but mainly I'm asking myself, you know, the sky, you know, is, is the value of the sky the correct relationship with the values of the trees and the value of the ground and the value of the barn, all right? And do I have an overall color scheme going on here that's convincing? There's not a whole lot of depth in this painting, but if there were, I'd be asking myself some serious questions about the aerial perspective. But I'm pretty happy with this. At this stage, sometimes what I like to do is attack it a little bit with a palette knife. I like to keep myself from getting too locked in to uh, a perfect literal interpretation of what I'm seeing. Plus it can make some interesting textures to build off of more of an abstract type approach if you will. Now that paint up there is kind of thick so I don't want to attack that real heavily.
Wonder if that guy decided to mow the lawn just because I was here to annoy me. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna reestablish the foreground darks. You know, this is interesting. We have some cloud cover moving in. Some big clouds moving through this area. Now, because the scene is mostly backlit, it's not going to impact it quite as much, but it will have somewhat of an impact. Sometimes it's hard to see, you know, this is early afternoon, the sun's very high up, and it can be make, make it very challenging to see your subject accurately, but, and sometimes a big cloud coming over is a bit of a relief as far as that's concerned, but it does change your scene, not having that direct sunlight on it. And so you wanna make sure you don't chase the light too much when you um, when you run into that situation. And see so right now at this precise moment these trees are in a cloud shadow while the barn's in sunlight so it makes those trees a lot darker and cooler. It's kind of a neat effect but I don't know if I want to chase that or not. Soften this up here.
Okay, and here I'm just putting in some of these darker accents. Now that I have everything pretty well locked in, um, locked in and accurate, I can go in at this point and start to uh, really play with things. Speaking of uh, suspicion, suspicion of plein air painters, um, one time I was painting not too far from here in an apple orchard, and I actually knew the guy who owned the apple orchard, got his permission to go pretty much anywhere in the apple orchard and paint. And um, it was it's a huge apple orchard though, I mean, miles and miles across. And I was, uh, painting in this one spot and I just finished up and I was photographing the area and this lady came up with her camera and her phone and held it up to me and was recording me and asking me all kinds of questions. Apparently they had been having problems with vandalism so I couldn't blame her but um, I had a pretty good alibi um, but she didn't buy it. She went up and photographed my license plate so I photographed her license plate too with my camera. I had a much bigger camera than she did, but she just uh, was really, really suspicious. And I can't, I definitely can't blame the concern if you got people messing around with your, you know, your, near your property and all that. It's just usually a, a petty thief or petty vandal probably wouldn't go through the effort of bringing really nice camera equipment and plein air painting equipment and stand there for an hour and a half and do a painting to scope a place out. But it was, it was a kind of an interesting situation. most people are pretty cool one time I was painting this barn is winter time and the people came out I'd asked for their permission because I actually stood at the end of their driveway and painted you know if, I, if I'm definitely standing on occupied property I will uh, I will ask for permission um, for sure but anyway they they were really cool they started bringing me out hot chocolate and cookies and everything and that was that was really awesome very nice people they invited me in their house afterwards and so you just never know the adventures of planner painting stop the camera for a minute I have to get some more transparent rod oxide on my palette okay so we got some transparent rod oxide we're in good shape there now I uh, have to decide what to do next I have this in I think I want to cool down yeah I think that's what I was doing I was cooling down the uh, some of the barn a little bit. It's fairly warm, which is fine, but it's a little too warm, I think. There's some deep, cool reds in there. So I wanna see if I can get those in. Red, for me at least, 
on structures is a very challenging color to paint. I've done a lot of uh, red architecture that ended up just becoming a disaster. It's so easy to make it too intense. Now this side here I think is a little too long. It's coming down this way. Architecturally it does not look right. So we use some of the background color to bring it in some more. Okay, then I think I have to bring this lower part out some more. This thing with architecture, when you notice an error, it usually affects all parts of the painting. Now with these bank barns, the um, top wooden part jettisons out further from the bottom foundation in most of these. So while the uh, corner, the top part is right about here, the corner of the bottom part is over further. Wind's starting to pick up right as I'm starting to put in these details. Now, there's all kinds of little things going on when you look at these windows. They have these little tiny shutters. I'm not gonna bother with that at all. Not with the painting this small, not with the time constraint I'm under. All I'm really concerned about, and you've heard me say this before if you watch my other videos, is getting in the proper color and value relationships. If I get that, I'm good.
Also, I do uh, live online painting classes. Do it through Zoom. We meet every Saturday as a group. And I take you through a painting from start to finish over a four week period of time. We don't paint nearly this fast. We go a little more detail than this, more of a finished painting. Um, I have to go fast and be rough because I don't have four weeks, four Saturdays to do this. I have about an hour and a half, if that. But anyway, it's a fun group. Oops, almost tipped over my uh, whole easel there in the wind. Um, I take you through step by step, explaining in detail the colors I'm mixing, the values, why I'm mixing them, the whole thought process. It's a hardcore, you know, learning. And if they're, uh, beginners can do it, intermediate. I've even had some advanced students who really liked it. And I'm also, uh, I give feedback on paintings. We have a Q&A session too, which uh, students really like, where um, you can send me your painting and we do a live Q&A. I don't identify the artist or those unless you want to be identified, but I give you feedback on any paintings or artwork you may have. And I'm sorry, there's a critique session, not a Q&A. Um, but we also have a Q&A too where you can just ask questions. Um, all the sessions are recorded, so if you can't make that particular time, you can uh, watch it later. And you also get access, as long as you're a member, to those recordings and to all the previous recordings of previous sessions. So. So anyway, we go check it out. Click on the link below. Um, it's the first link you'll see in the description below. And that'll take you to the uh, waiting list where you can sign up. And when a spot is open, I will let you know. And then you can uh, join. Seeing a lot of this green here, picking up that color from that ambient light bouncing up in there. Drop the palette knife. really want to try to get that kind of ambient green going on that first door. And I have to try to get it on all the doors here.
Okay, there's some windows in there too. They're very dark. I'm gonna try to get those in. Kind of amazed that the cops haven't showed up. I thought that lady was going to call the police on me for sure. Okay, so I had to clean my paddle off a little bit. Good on that. I'm gonna leave off the barn for now. There are some cupolas up there I still have to get in if I want to. I think they're pretty important. But I wanna go back to the foreground and just uh, strengthen this up a little bit more. I don't like how intense that yellow is. Um, it looks like it could be that intense, but I know if I leave it like that, when I get it back inside, it's not going to make a nice painting. Under a cloud shadow. So I really tried to uh, knock down that green sum. Yellow green is nice, but if you go too overboard with it, it just doesn't look good a lot of times.
lot of times too with these greens, just one green doesn't do it. There's going to be a lot of variation between warm and cool greens in any scene. Yeah, see, when I keep looking out there, I'm seeing even more cools in those greens. If I can get that tone, that would be really nice. I want to tone these greens down even more. Now, these greens are, when I squint at this, they really jump out from the, uh, from the barn. Part of it too is there's these subtle yellows. That I'm gonna stick in right now, these little goldenrod flowers going to dab in some color to imply those. But the other thing is I think right in here if I darken that area right there I think that will help also. In your, in your painting, if you keep kind of fighting with a certain area and you just can't get the correct um, impression or look, you know, and you, you think it's, like in this, you might think it's the grass. It might not be the grass at all. It's what's next to it that's the problem. think that roof might be a little too pink. So I'm just taking some transparent red oxide, almost the same value, and I'm just putting some of that in there as an accent. I'm not trying to cover up everything that's there. When you, when you think something's just slightly off, um, a lot of times you don't need to cover it up, cover up completely what's there. Just, you know, paint something that's, uh, just shift the color or the value just a little bit. And don't try to cover up everything that's there, like just go crazy and, you know, like you're painting your bathroom or something, a, a different color than what 
it's there and because you hate the color that's there before. It just might need a just a hint of something else there also. See, in th this barn, it's this roof is tricky anyway, just because it's an aluminum roof. I'm sure that it was one time a wooden roof, and it they wanted to preserve the barn, so they went with aluminum because it's a lot cheaper, I'm sure, than trying to redo the wood. But it does make for a challenging situation to paint. to get some of these subtle greens. The uh, trees are starting to grow their foliage back there. So getting that in definitely helped. Okay, now for those cupolas. These cupolas up there, they're really pretty neat. Um, but I don't want to, I'm not gonna spend all day trying to get the architecture of them just perfect. I just wanna know to those for right now. Just get a note of the uh, color and value. Once again, like I said, you'd be out here all day painting those. And unless you're doing a, oops, hopefully that's not in your way. Sorry about that if it was. Um, if, you're, if you're doing a plein air event, you know, a competition, that's, that's kind of a different story. I used to do those a lot. I don't really do them much anymore. A lot of pressure in those, um, you know, to get nice finished paintings and everything. But when you're out here just sketching in oil like I am, and you don't need to worry about obsessing over that stuff. Just get the value and color note and leave it at that. You'll probably get some people walk by and go something like, when are you going to put the detail in? I've had that happen before. Don't worry about what they think. I'm trying to hold up my shade box so it doesn't fall because there's winds picking up again.
another brush. So far it seems like the new camera is working well. That's good. My Canon 7D used to shut off frequently. I literally, all videos before this when I was recording, I'd have to stop like every five or 10 minutes at the most and then restart the camera. It just would shut off. Um, there's this crazy law, I guess, and. The European Union about they only let you have a half hour worth of recording time on a camera on a digital SLR maybe there's a good reason for it I don't know but seems kind of pointless if I buy a camera and I want to record for an hour and a half straight I should be able to but Anyway, so they make them, even this one shuts off after a half hour, but for some reason my old 7D, that would shut off constantly. And so I would have to uh, remember every 10 minutes at most to stop painting, shut off the camera, restart the camera, and then start painting again. And it was a pain. But this one seems to be holding out nice. The, bi the big thing though was the overheating. My previous camera would, um, would overheat start flashing and it would just shut off and then I have to wait like five ten minutes before I could turn it back on which is not good for this made editing these videos and putting together the tracks a heck of a lot longer too so I'm hoping that this is really gonna shorten my editing time And like I said earlier, if you uh, haven't yet, if you could subscribe, that'd be awesome. It really helps me to continue to want to do this. I don't get paid to do this. Um, my channel will probably soon be monetized. It's not yet. And it's quite a bit that goes into it. So like I said, the new camera that I bought, that was like 500 bucks. And I did it just so I could keep making these videos for free. Um, so if you like them, give me a thumbs up because that really helps me out. If all of a sudden, like, people just completely stopped watching and stopped liking, I'd just stop making them and save myself a heck of a lot of time throughout the day. But, but I do like teaching. I do like sharing information. And like I said, if you want to check out my workshops, um, click on the link below. Got a lot of happy students. Uh, spaces don't always open, but they do open. I have students that have to leave for various reasons, medical, time, schedule, so on and so forth. Um, But love to have you there if you're interested.
apologize my paper towels keep getting away the pallet I'm I keep getting wind gusts here that I have to hold up the uh, the shade box so I don't want the wind to knock it down Okay, I think we'll call that a painting. Thank you for watching.